Hi, I'm Dr. Danny, and today I'm going to be talking about why you need to stop being cheap on groceries and spend some cash on eating better, and why eating cheap food might be dangerously affecting your health. I'm also going to give you seven quick tips on how to eat healthier food without breaking your bank. North Americans spend far less on food than Europeans, who on average spend about 10% of their income on food. And they eat less junk food than us. Fast food, processed food, they eat all less of this than we do in North America. We've been duped by the big corporate food companies in North America into buying their BS that packaged, pre-made cheap food that they're dishing out is an acceptable way of eating and shopping for food. Unfortunately, this just isn't true. Many people, including my own partner before I met before he met me, refuse to spend money buying local grass-fed beef, local organic vegetables or unsprayed vegetables and fruits, and shopping at a local market where you can just when you can just go to a bulk barn or a big chain store and get everything for pennies. But just like everything else in life, when it comes to buying food, you really do get what you pay for. The reason why good food is more expensive is because it's more expensive to grow it and to raise animals without pumping them full of chemicals, hormones, and feeding them, and it's more expensive to feed them healthy food that they're supposed to be eating instead of a bunch of garbage that's bad for them, and then bad for us after we eat the animal that's been feasting on such garbage for its entire life. I do understand that most people are on a budget, and there's lots of different ways to spend your hard-earned money. So here are some, a few tips on how to shop healthier without breaking the bank. Number one is look for sales. Even expensive grocery stores like Whole Foods, for example, usually has certain items in each department on sale each week. Try to look in the deals flyer for each grocery store and decide which of the sale items you can buy and use to make meals that week. You can make this fun by, um, by making the fruit or vegetable that's on sale your key ingredient for a few days and then just Google some quick easy recipes using that thing. For example, for a while in our organic grocer they had kale on sale. So for that week we made kale chips, kale in salad, baked fish on a bed of steamed kale, and kale um, put in our juicer added to ginger and apple for an afternoon green energy burst. You get the picture. Number two tip is buy cheap cuts of meat. You don't have to buy a filet or tenderloin to get tasty meat. And in fact, the cheaper cuts of meat are often tastier and more flavorful. A great option is flank steaks. Even the grass-fed beef flank steaks will be cheap because it's one of the cheapest cuts of beef and it tastes wonderful after being marinated overnight and then sliced super thin after pan frying it. Or you just put it on the grill for a few minutes or under the broiler. It's my favorite cut of beef to buy actually. Next one is buy cheap veggies like root veggies, legumes, onions, cabbages, garlic, and ginger roots are usually on the cheaper side even in the organic produce departments. Spinach is another one that's usually inexpensive. The same goes for fruits. Organic berries, especially when they're not grown locally, are very expensive usually versus apples, which are still fairly cheap, even the organic kind. Next one is buy things that are in season. This goes mostly for veg veggies and fruits, obviously. It can make a huge difference both nutritionally and to your wallet if you try to keep it local. Local produce has way more nutrients and antioxidant power because it's fresher and it hasn't sat in a shipping container for thousands of miles. I found that around Vancouver, for example, where I live, there are some local farms that they don't spray their fruits and vegetables with pesticides, so it's basically just as good as organic, but way cheaper. So this is a good thing to investigate in your local area too. Next tip is to go berry picking in the summer and freeze them all. My favorite thing to do in the summer is to spend a day at a local farm picking berries with my friends. We usually bring huge bids and then just fill them to the brim. There's one local farm that will even help you make your own blueberry wine with the ones that, um, that you pick. And it's a great day, it's great exercise, and it's the cheapest way I know to stock up on berries for the rest of the season and for the coming fall and winter. I usually have an entire freezer packed full of berries by the end of the summer and my stash usually at last until next spring. Last summer I had a pie making party at our house actually with all our friends They came over with their berries that they had picked and they combined it with all of our berries and our friend Tyler led the charge making blueberries, Saskatoon berries, strawberries, salmon berries and peach pies and we ended up with about 12 pies, everyone got to take one home, it was just a great way to end the season and totally worth the disaster zone we managed to create in our kitchen. Having a windowsill or patio herb garden is the next tip to making cheap food really healthy. 
I realize that not everyone has the luxury of having an outdoor garden or yard, but even if you live in an apartment building, you can easily grow yummy herbs in a windowsill planter container. I sometimes get lazy and cheat even more by buying a, from a local plant store or from Whole Foods where they have planters with herbs that are already started for you, and all you have to do is just put your container on the windowsill and water it every few days or so. It's just so much fun and healthy to whip up a quick stir fry, grab a pinch of your fresh herbs from the windowsill, and just throw them into the pan. If you have a balcony and you have enough, enough room for some bigger potted plants outside, then cucumbers, peppers, and tomato plants are all really easy to grow and they'll save you a lots of money on buying veggies. The next money-saving tip to eat healthy is buy direct from a local farm that doesn't spray its produce with pesticides. It doesn't have to be organic. The most important thing is that that farm doesn't use chemical pesticides. There's a few farms near us in Vancouver that actually deliver a weekly veggie and fruit basket filled with seasonal stuff right to your door and it's freshly picked that day from the farm. I'm going to sign up for one again this year. They have a program where you can sign up for um, the basket and it gets delivered for your house and it's different for each season. So summer tends to be a lot of berries and fruits and green vegetables and their fall baskets are loaded with great root vegetables and apples. Do some asking in, around your city and see if there's any similar programs that they offer. My favorite thing about doing this is, well, there's actually two things. One, it's I get to be lazy and I get these fresh vegetables delivered to my doorstep. And two, I get to feel great about supporting local small farms who don't use pesticides. Not to mention it saves me lots of money on produce. So there you have it. The big point here is that to eat healthy, you should either be spending more money on your food or spending more time and energy acquiring it and preparing it. And remember, it was not so long ago in history that humans spent the majority of their waking life looking for food, hunting and gathering, and then later farming. The most valuable thing you have is your health, and cheap food can seriously affect it. Now, I'm sure this video has probably ruffled some feathers. I know many people have money stresses these days. In a future video, I'm going to be talking about the cheapest ways to eat healthy, because not all cheap food is bad and not all expensive food is good. Would you spend more time getting food or spending more money on more prepared foods? Leave me a comment below, I wanna know.